This is Tennessee Homestead. How the heck are you today? I hope you're doing real well. Hey, listen, I got a little, uh, I was going to do this video on uh, cattle handling equipment. And I ran across from one of the vendors that I used to use, a pretty good video. And so I've kind of stuck it in there and edited it a little bit. Um, and I figured it would be a lot faster and simpler than me sitting here rattling my jaws all the time. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. So hopefully it'll give you a little break. Um, but this is, you've heard me say it a lot. Infrastructure first, animal second, okay? Because if you're going to properly take care of an animal, you got to have the infrastructure to do it. It's just that simple. Plus it's going to save you money in the long run. Because if you have to bring a vet out to take care of a sick animal, and you don't have cattle handling equipment, He's probably going to make you haul it into his place if he's set up for cattle handle, handling at his office. Or he's going to charge you an arm and a leg to come out there and, and run one down in the barn or whatever. Trust me, it'd save you a bunch of money. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, plus on anything, artificial insemination, uh, just giving them their shots, checking the cow out. Things of this nature, load them on trailers. You can put an extension chute or ramp going up to your trailer off of that head gate and just run them down through the chutes and so forth. You get an idea. But take a look at it, see what you think. Leave me some comments, let me know, you know, whether or not you uh, liked it or not. I'm going to try to make these videos a little shorter for you guys because I know you're out there trying to make money with cattle, not sitting there listening to me rattle. So with that said, let me get that video played for you and I'll talk to you a little bit at the end of it. Y'all have a super day, okay? <laughs> When we talk about the minimum amount of equipment that somebody ought to have if they own livestock, they have some responsibilities for animal health practices and, and doing those required procedures on cows and emergency operations. It's a lot easier to get a veterinarian to come call on your operation if they know you have some kind of facility to capture and restrain that cow. This is kind of the minimum we think you ought to have, at least some sort of lead up to where the cattle can be brought in here safely, some way to catch your head and hold them steady. Uh, the system has a chain where you can restrain the head as well and hold them in place. Um, you don't necessarily need a squeeze chute on small operations, but as a minimum, you need a head catch. It allows you to have a self-catch uh, set up as well. If you're working a small outfit, a lot of times you're by yourself, so self-catch really helps in that standpoint. This particular setup holds two cows in the crowd alley, and that's kind of a minimum. Some people like to make a real short alleyway leading up to their head gate or chute on a small operation, and cattle always work better in pairs, at least two. So you want to set up a small system where you can at least bring two head in at one time. This type head gate allows you to have a cow right behind the other one that's going to come in. And so if you have a certain type of head gate that opens to the outside to release one, you can't get it closed and catch the next cow. So if you're working in a small system like this, this is an ideal kind of head gate that opens to the side and closes. And that way you can catch the next cow right behind the one that she's leaving. So keep that in mind as you're looking at head gates to put on the end of a little alleyway for an operation. It needs to be one where you can, you don't have any other way of stopping the cow behind her other than the head gate. The open sided system that we have here is a 90 degree uh, turn to that tub. It allows you to come off an alleyway and use a sweep to bring the cattle in. I particularly like this angle because it allows you to work from the side of those cattle as they come around that sweep, you're still able to put pressure on them. But the advantage to that is it's not real noisy as it goes around, which is distracting. If it goes to banging and clanging, cattle to have a tendency they won't stop and see what that is. So actually I prefer these quieter uh, sweep gates as well. If you're going to use this same system for calves, this head gate works very good because it, regardless of size it can catch and hold the head. The difference would be in this system it doesn't have adjustable sides to it. 
And so if you're gonna be working caves, you still use the exact same system, but you might set panels on the inside of these to narrow it down so they don't turn around. Either that or bring them up one at a time. If you're bringing them up several at a time in this wider system, they're gonna turn around those. Now, five weights and up, gets borderline where they can turn around. So a lot of it has to do with the size of the cattle you're working on, but as a minimum, this is, works very good for cows and bulls or whatever you might need to put through on an operation. Calves, I'd look to narrow it some way, and there's some real simple ways to do that. Uh, those adjust, if you wanted to do a simple head gate like that, you can also use the panels and stuff that come in adjustable panel that come on some other chutes perhaps to lead up to this, where you can narrow it down very easily. But if I was working primarily cows or yearlings, this would work. David, as we look at designing facilities and we're talking about minimum things, safety always is an is a aspect of minimizing anything. So if you cut back too much, sometimes it's not safe. Right. But this little sweep system we're talking about here, it allows you to keep the cows flowing in a good manner, but it's got a good gate here that'll keep them from coming back on you as well. Well, Ron, this is, uh, like you say, a pretty well bare minimum. This is just a 90 degree sweep but it's half of our 180. Actually, you can do a 180, 135. You enter here after you push your cattle up and you've got your gate between you and the cows and, and that certainly increases your safety. You enter from this side, that way the cattle don't have a tendency to go here. And with this gate, I keep minimizing the opportunity for the cow to go anywhere but in the alley. As I get past any vertical stay, all I've got to do is push across like this and the latch will block and protect me from that cow possibly kicking back, hitting me with the gate, or turn around and trying to force me back. And if I want to stop this anywhere, I can slam it across here and that'll keep the cattle. If I see they're gonna turn around and challenge me, I can slam that. Otherwise, I can just keep pushing them up, minimizing their opportunity to go anywhere but in. One nice thing about this particular latch that we have is if one of these piston latches gets blocked the way it is here because the ground's not level, the other one will always latch in place. If in fact this was level and it was picked up and that one got blocked, you, both of them work independently. If that one gets blocked, this one will latch. If this one's blocked, this one will latch. It's an important safety feature. I'm not aware of anywhere else you can get it. One good thing about this particular system in this small, short alleyway, if you use a no back or something in something this short, it has a tendency to keep the cows from coming in very smoothly. So I, I like a, a sweep tub that will latch flush with the back of the alleyway. That way you don't have any of, uh, obstacles blocking these cows in here. If you were to put a no back, it would need to be up closer to the front. Alrighty, hopefully that uh, filled you in on a little bit. Like I said, uh, infrastructure first, animals second. You can save yourself a whole bunch of money. You'll find usually in the winter time, things of this nature, or find somebody that's getting ready to put their place up for sale, things of this nature. You can buy squeeze chutes, head gates, cattle panels, all that pretty cheap, okay? Save yourself a truckload of money. Probably save you, you know, 60% uh, Anywhere from, from 40 to 60% off a new price. But, yeah, it's not going to be as pretty. You might have to sand it out a little and do some painting. But it's a way to save some money. But make sure the equipment works properly, especially if you're looking at a squeeze chute. Uh, fairly decent size investment for that thing to be all hosed up. So, yeah, if a guy is selling you one of those used, make sure everything works. Okay, unless you're really, really feeling like learning about that equipment the hard way. Okay. Love you guys. Appreciate you. Hope this helped you out a little bit. And we'll talk to you real soon. Take care.